Hello, everybody. Hi there. How's everyone doing? Welcome to my live. My name is Laura Radrick. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in San Antonio, Texas. I go live just about every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and share some fun projects with you. So thank you for joining me, either now live or on the replay. I um, put my video on my Facebook personal page, on my business page, and then I post it to YouTube as well. So thank you very much. Um, how's everybody doing? Did everyone have a nice Labor Day weekend? I always feel like if I just had one more day. Hi, Jolene. Even when you have that one more day, I'm like, okay, but just one more day, right? <laughs> so anyway, made it through Tuesday. It'll be a short week. Tomorrow's hump day already, so that's good. I hope you guys had a great Labor Day weekend. Our weather here was pretty good. Um, I was actually off Friday too, so Friday, Saturday was pretty good. And then we started getting kind of rainy kind of weather. Um, hi, Lisa. So, you know, not the greatest. Today, it rained a lot today. There was like flooding rains today. So um, I guess it can't be perfect and sunny every day, right? And I think the high today was only like 81. That's crazy for us. Hi, Sharon. But, um, you know, we'll take it. It's still summer here in San Antonio, so that's all good. All right, well, exciting week and stamping up because um, I don't know if you guys know, but the mini catalog, I can't show you the inside yet. This premieres uh, tomorrow or pretty much tonight, probably at like 1 a.m. or something mountain time. So um, after tonight, I'll be able to open the catalog and show you all what's in it if you haven't already seen it. Oh, wow, Jolene had storm debris. Okay, isn't that crazy? So you guys had bad storms. Hmm. Um, okay, so be excited. I can't wait. Um, I've pre-ordered a lot of stuff as a demonstrator, so that's good. Um, but there's still a couple things that I haven't ordered, you know, that I want, you know, things that are on my wish list. Um, so anyway, exciting. I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to work with products out of this catalog tonight. So that's going to be fun. I feel like I'm a little foggy on camera, although I did clean my lens twice. So it might just be the time of day and kind of the light that's coming in. I'm not sure. All right. The other thing, well, I'll show you guys once I turn my camera down. Um, so our um, contest from last week, I said I was going to give away a set of these fabulous water painters. I don't know if you guys have these, but I love these. Um, especially for, for me because I'm not much of a watercolor. So these are like just perfect and handy. Um, all you had to do to enter the contest was comment on one of my videos. And the winner from this week is Jolene Kent. So Jolene, congratulations. I'll be putting in these in the mail for you. And thank you for commenting. Thank you to everyone who comments. I, I really appreciate it. I love seeing everybody's comments. It's super fun. Um, so thank y'all. Okay, this week I'm going to give away a set of these fabulous iridescent foil gems. So you can see how pretty these are. I haven't used these too much yet, but um, they're really, really pretty. So again, all you have to do is just comment on one of my videos, or either Facebook or YouTube, and you'll be entered in. Thank you. And I also want to say a special thank you to people who share, people who give me the thumbs up. All that stuff really helps me, so thank you all so much. Okay, enough talking, right? Let's turn the camera around and we're going to get started. All right, now here we go. This has become kind of a crazy weekly fiasco now with trying to see how close I can get. It's so far away. I don't know why it's far away, but I'm going to play with it for a minute. So just kind of bear with me and I just want to see if I can get, let me see if I can move this. A little bit I can't um, so so what happens is when I zoom in um, I can see it on my phone zoomed but then it doesn't transfer over to what we're looking at right here it's still very far away right here so I'm gonna leave it zoomed in and see if it like kicks in at some point or not I know someone had mentioned last week that at the end of my video when I was unzooming to try and um, turn off the video that suddenly it got closer so I don't know let me try going out one more time I'm just playing hopefully I won't turn us off I don't know 
It's kind of crazy. Now I've got, I don't know what's going on. Okay, hold on a second. Hopefully I didn't mess this up. Okay. I don't know. Let me flip it again. Let me try flipping it this time and then changing the camera. Same thing. Okay, so I've gotten nowhere. All right, we're just going to go with it. I'm going to be far away again. I'm very sorry. I wish I knew how to fix this, but as of right now, I can't fix it. Okay, Jolene, um, when you restarted, I don't know if you heard that you won the contest from last week, so I'm going to send those water painters to you. Okay, you guys, so here's the other exciting news. The, um, the scrapbooking is coming out tomorrow, and there's several scrapbooking workshop kits. If you guys are on my email list, I sent a link last week so that you could look at the scrapbook. Um, or if you go to Stampin' Up, you can look at the new scrapbook brochure. Um, but I just printed off a couple of the pages just to give you an idea. These little workshop kits, um, I think are going to be fun. It's been a long time since I scrapbooked. So they're almost like paper pumpkins, right? Except that you're making scrapbook pages. So it looks like fun. I'm going to order some of these when I place my order early tomorrow morning. Uh, do you guys like scrapbooking? Has anybody have any interest in that? Hi, Barb. Okay. Um, would you be interested in doing a video? Should I do a video and put some of these together with everybody? Let me know if you have any interest in the comments and we'll see. But I'm going to get some of these kits tomorrow for sure. I love the Halloween. I love the little reindeer. Super fun. Super fun papers. Nice um, scrapbooking big stamp sets. So this is exciting. I can't wait to try it and see what it's like. And I really should be scrapbooking since I have my little grand babies that would like their pictures displayed, right? Okay. Oh, Barb, you said your order didn't come today. I'm sorry. That's, that's kind of crummy. She was waiting for the more than autumn bundle um, to come today. So you guys, that's what we're going to use tonight. I've got these fun projects. I think they're fun. I hope you guys like them. Um, we're going to make this card. Nothing's better than pumpkin spice. We're getting in the season, except maybe you. This is a really fun uh, little gift box. And we're actually going to put some donuts inside here. I thought, well, this would be fun if you're at work or something and hey, having a bad day. Bring this to one of your coworkers and say, hey, this calls for donuts. Let's, let's, have, some, let's have a treat. <laughs> then we're going to do a couple. So two fall projects, two kind of um, more festive Christmas time projects or winter projects, I should say. Um, you had me at hot cocoa, and we've got our nice little hot cocoa packet that's gonna slide in and out of there, another nice treat. And then I have this one here, you are the peppermint to my hot cocoa. All right, so these are the projects we're gonna make tonight. All right, let's see what we've got here. This, you guys, have you guys seen this um, bundle? This might be my favorite bundle out of the new catalog, out of all of them. I just think it's so fun. This was um, a Million Dollar Achiever um, stamp set. And I, the, it's, the possibilities are endless with all these different um, fonts and words. You can just put all kinds of stuff together. I love, love, love the things that you can um, stamp and color and die cut. Just so many choices. It's just so fun. And then the dies, of course, are awesome. This is a big die set. There's 23 dies in it. And it cuts out all the good things, the donuts, the pumpkin pie, um, some fall leaves. And then we've also got all these words that can cut out, like the hot cocoa. We're going to use that to cut out hot cocoa for one of our projects. So um, fabulous. I feel like this one is going to sell out really, really fast. So that's why I wanted to do it tonight. Like, let's do it before it sells out. Okay, so the other things we're going to use on this card right here, we're going to use this largest perennial postage die to kind of do our outline right here. Do you guys have this? So these are super fun, and these go great with this kit, uh, this bundle, because look how skinny they are, and then you have that little bit of definition, right? So we're going to use these tonight, too. And these are an online exclusive. These are the Happy Little Things dies. Um, so these are fun. We're going to use these tonight, too. Of course, stylish shapes, got to use those pretty much every week. And then the other thing we're going to use are the nested essentials dies. And we'll use these on a couple of projects tonight. We're going to use um, these right here um, for this card. Okay, I do want to mention too that um, if you guys are interested in getting the card kit this week, all you have to do is place an order of $35 more at my Stampin' Up! website by Saturday. 
Um, and then this is the host code for this week. It's B2KAVD4B. Um, and it's a $35 order. I'll send it to you for free. And you'll see as we go along what comes in the card kits. Um, if you don't want to order from me, maybe your demonstrator or something, you can always order the make and takes for $20. Okay? So that is the scoop on that. Here's the pieces for our first card. Some of these um, projects have a lot of pieces, um, which is good because you don't want to cut those by yourself, right? I'll cut them for you. Get the kit. Okay, we're going to start. I, these are some of my favorite colors. I love fall colors. These are some of my favorite fall colors. So what we're doing is we're starting with Mossy Meadow. All right, so this is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, just our basic card base. We're going to open it this way. All right, I've got, um, for the inside layer, I've got a piece that we're gonna stamp on, and this is very vanilla. This is five and a quarter by four, so we'll leave that out to stamp. Then I have a piece of this DSP. Now you guys may recognize this DSP. We're gonna use two different sets of DSP tonight. This one is Iconic Celebrations Designer Series Paper. And these, this is um, great because it celebrates all kinds of different seasons. There's birthday, Christmas, um, some generic stuff, snowflakes, like look at these fun patterns, right? Love that one for Christmas. Um, so that's what we're going to use for the fall cards tonight, okay? We're going to use this pattern and this pattern. I think this just is uh, went on back order this week. I can't remember when the date said it was going to return, but I think this just um, went unorderable this week. So I hope you guys already got that. Um, if not, again, it'll be available in my kit. I will pre-cut this for you. Okay, so this is very vanilla. I cut this with the largest perennial postage die, so we're going to do some layers on the front of our card. All right, and then this right here is our first piece of the DSP, and this is four and three quarters by three and a half. And you can see this is going to fit in really nicely here and just leave us that little bit of that stamp border. So let's put that down right now. Not using any ribbon on this card. But I love this little fall pattern with the leaves. And I think the, the pattern on the leaves is actually white. So you could do very vanilla or white. I just feel like very vanilla adds just kind of that warm fall feeling to everything. So, and I, and I think it's fine to mix white and cream too. All right, so we've got this layer here. And let's go ahead and put it down um, just with seal on the front of our card. Let's see if I can get this straight. It's got kind of a thick border so you can tell if I don't get it in the right place exactly. But I think that's pretty good. All right. Now, other pieces. I, I told you about the nested essentials die, so I did this one in, let me show you which one in case you wanna know. It is the second largest, okay, in mossy meadow. And then again, in the very vanilla, the next size down. I love these because you can do the layers with them, which I think looks really nice. Okay, so let's just put this down. And we're kind of building our background for our fun little, um, what would you call them, elements, embellishments. So we're just getting it all ready. Right like this. I feel like there's a little thing which will probably be covered up with the pie. Otherwise, I'm going to get out my little eraser. Is that straight? Mm, kind of, sort of. This needs to come down just a tiny bit this way. All right. Mm. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's not be super crazy picky, right? Which I am, I know. Okay, I have just this piece. It's like, um, it looks like it's three and a half by three inches. This is just basic white. We're gonna do our stamping on this as well. Let me put this inside piece over here for now. Then I have these labels. So I've uh, gone ahead and cut with um, the little things dies on this one. I wanted something really skinny, and I like how you have the little flagged edge and a little bit of stitching, so it just adds just a little touch to it, so we'll stamp on that. And then this is from the Stylish Shapes dies, okay? So we're gonna stamp on those two things too. We got some stamping to do tonight. Now, we're also going to, I've got these two pieces right here. We're gonna die cut some leaves out of these, and then these two pieces we're going to stamp and paper piece our little latte cup together, all right? So let's start stamping. Let me get out my Memento Black. All right, and what are we gonna need? So 
we are definitely going to need, let's start with the cup. All right, so let me move this out of the way so you can see. So we are gonna start with the cup and just stamp it right on our piece of DSP. So we have that piece right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the very vanilla piece. And I think these are just like two by one and a half inches. Okay, so that's gonna be mostly our cup, right? All right, I've got, you know, this um, set has a lot of stamps, so I've got stamps mounted all over the place. So it's gonna take me a minute to find everything tonight because there's so many pieces. We are going to need some whipped cream. So we'll do that. We're going to need a little straw. So we've got this little striped straw. So I'm gonna do that, all right. We're going to need um, some pie. Who loves pumpkin pie? So we've got pie. All right, we need some, we need another whipped cream. Okay, so the interesting thing about this is let me get back my whipped cream. We're gonna do a little one on the pumpkin pie. So you use the same stamp, but the die cut is little, so it just cuts out that little piece right there. So let me get something to put underneath, because I don't wanna waste the whole sheet with this. And I'm just gonna stamp like just this part right here, because I'm just gonna cut out this very little part right there, okay? And then we need some cute little pumpkins. So I need two pumpkins. Let me check the inside. I didn't put anything on the inside, did I? No. All right. So just the two pumpkins. All right. Now let's see. These are going to get stamped in pumpkin pie, and so is this. All right. So let's attach our piece right here. This is gonna go across the bottom on the inside. And then what we said was on the inside, so we've got nothing's better than pumpkin spice except maybe you. So let's finish the inside with pumpkin pie. Let me get rid of the memento. And I need except maybe you. All right, hold on, I'm shopping. Here it is. All right, and then I'm gonna take the little heart and we'll just do a little heart. Let's do two little hearts, All right? Okay, there's our inside leaving the pumpkin pie out because we have two more things to stamp. But I am going to take a second just to put this down before anything happens to it. Whoa. Speaking of things happening, I just, my sheet fell down. I always put my sheet up next to me and did fall into the ink. This is my uh, project and measurement sheet. I always um, post it, tape it right next to me hanging so I can see the measurements as we're going along. Okay. Nothing's better than, nothing's, what does that one say? That's it. Nothing's better than. Now, who thinks we can get this straight? Hmm, I don't know. All right, I have to bring it down. I apologize, but I cannot do the angle. Don't ask me why I feel the need to line this up on my grid, but I always do, just it helps me be straight. Okay, a little bit to the right, but it's okay. And then pumpkin spice, where are you? It's hard to see because they're all clear, right? Here it is. So the pumpkin spice are two stamps that I put together right next to each other. Okay, that one's a little better. Are we happy with this or should I try it one more time? I always do extras in case I mess it up. All right, let me try one more time if I can find again. All 
Okay, I think that one's better centered. Let's use that one. Okay, it's time to assemble. Well, first we have to color. Let's not forget that. Okay, so um, on here, I kind of used crumb cake for the crust, but I'm not super thrilled that I like that color. So I think I'm gonna try some pecan pie. Um, so there's lots, you know, we have lots and lots of, um, yeah, at least I could have flipped it over um, for sure, but sometimes I don't like the way the stitching looks on the other side, but you're right, you definitely could do that. So we've got lots of um, kind of our natural tones, they call them. So, you know, find one that you like. This is just ivory beige and the wild wheat. And then here's the natural tones. So whatever color you think looks like pie crust, I guess would be the color to use. Um, and they start with the 100, they go from the darkest to the lightest to 1000. That almost looks like pink, right? And those are a little faded because they kind of fade when they dry. So anyway, let's try um, pecan pie. So this is the light pecan pie. And we'll just do our crust. I'm just gonna do it in one color. I could bring in the dark, but I feel like that'd be way too dark. So I can just do a little shading once I color it. And you guys can decide which one you like better. Just a little shading just by adding another layer of the same color. This might be a little dark Kind of looks like a little bit of burnt crust, right? <laughs> we don't want to burn the crust on our pumpkin pie. Okay. Oh, I forgot to stamp one thing. So we need some sprinkles too on our whipped cream. So there's a really fun sprinkle die and I'm just gonna put some orange sprinkles on there with pumpkin pie. And these kind of line up pretty well too. So you can kind of see them pretty well once you, whoa. So there's our cute little sprinkles. And that's it, we're leaving that white. All right, back to coloring. Let's use some light pumpkin pie and just do um, the little straw stripes. That gets like cut out. We're gonna do the pumpkins and let me get out my dark pumpkin pie too because we'll kind of use both of them. So for the pumpkins, I'm just gonna go kind of with the dark along the edges like that. And then kind of shade it in with the light. And I'll let those colors kind of get wet and mixed together and then I'll go over it again just to kind of blend them a little more. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the light pumpkin pie first um, for our piece of pumpkin pie. I've seen this done with a little darker colors too, a little bit of maybe some Cajun craze, I'm not sure. I think I like the pumpkin pie. But again, now I'm looking at this one, I'm thinking, well, maybe our crust is a little too dark now. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Let's add just a little bit of shading. And then we'll kind of blend this out. So I'm just kind of roughing it in, just like that. And I'm gonna get my other tip and see if I can blend it a little bit better with that tip. Once it kind of gets wet, it's much easier to blend. Let's see if we can get some of this blended. And then we've got a piece of pumpkin pie that just needs a little bit of whipped cream. Okay, I think we're done coloring. I put my markers away. Okay, so now let's get out our dies. And you can see these are perfect for everything. We've got our little pie. We're gonna die cut that out. Our whipped cream. Here is our little baby whipped cream. So let me, this goes this way here. So you can see which part is gonna cut out just the top part of the whipped cream like that. Um, we have our little pumpkins, right? So we're gonna cut out two of those. And then we're also gonna send, um, now there's two different things. One is for cinnamon sticks and the other one is for um, the straw, 
okay? So run all these things through your die cutter. And I've already done that to save us, I don't know, maybe a minute of time, right? <laughs> so let me pull those pieces. And we have our piece of pie. See, it kind of lightened up a little bit, right, overnight? So it actually doesn't look too bad here, the pecan pie, as it's a little bit lighter. I don't know. You guys decide what you like. Just, I just, just kind of looked a little gray to me in the crumb cake. It had more of a gray tone, and I was like, mm, I don't know about that. Okay, so we've got that. We've got our whipped cream. We've got our little whipped cream that's going to go there. We have our two pumpkins. And we have our straw. Okay, so we've got that. All right. Next, excuse me, we want to take these two pieces. And what we're going to do is just take this leaf die and I cut a leaf out of both of these, right? It gets flipped over and you cut one out of here, one out of here. I'll give you the little pieces of cardstock in your kit. And then this cute little thing that says latte. So you're gonna cut one of these out of the um, Cajun craze also, all right? So now we've got our little latte, little die cut. And the way these leaves cut out, this is how they come out of the die cut. And there's two pieces to it. So I'm gonna pull them apart if I'm able to. Hopefully they die cut all the way through. Okay, they did. So you get two pieces of the leaf, okay? So I've got two in the pumpkin, I've got one in the pumpkin pie that I've separated and one I've done in the Cajun craze. And then we're gonna mix and match them, right? So we're gonna put this one with this one and this one with that one, all right? So that's what we've got. I think that's all our pieces now. Let me put these away before I would be devastated if I lost one of these little bitty dies. Okay, let's assemble this card now. Okay, let me pull all the pieces down here before somebody gets lost. And then let me show you what we're gonna do here. So let's start by building our cup. Um, that's a very good idea, um, Jolene. She's saying, would the color lifter work on the crust? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and Lisa says peach pie gives a nice orange. That's also a great suggestion. I would like to play with that now, but I'll finish making this first <laughs> and then play with it. I feel like you could just keep going on these projects. So while there is a die for this, because we're doing the paper piecing, uh, I don't want to border around the edge of the stamp, so I'm just taking a second and just cutting it out right on the black edge. So we've got this little cup. Then on this one, all I want is the label. So I'm just going to cut the label out. And again, staying on the black line, which is going to kind of disappear into the other black line. And this is going to be the label on our latte cup. All right, so now let's start putting these things together. Let me get my glue started. Hold on. My stamp pads are kind of in the way tonight. Like the way things are arranged, I'm just not feeling it. My glue's getting kind of gunky. Okay, so let's start by putting our label on with just a little bit of adhesive. So that's just gonna go right on top of the cup and you can see the black lines kind of blend into the black lines. All right, so we've got that. Let's take um, this little piece and glue it to our pumpkin pie. So we have our little baby whipped cream. Where's my tweezers? Cause I'm already starting to get full of glue. So we've got that. All right, these are good the way they are. All these pieces are good. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of glue to the bottom of this and attach it to the cup. Let me get out my little silicone mat so I don't get glue on my work surface. Whoops. All right, let that dry for a second. 
All right, and I'm gonna just take a little bit of glue right on the end of here and kind of place my straw where I want it to be, which is gonna be right there, okay? The latte, very tiny. You could use your um, little sticker sheet if you wanted to for this, or just add little tiny bits of glue, dot your glue, and that's gonna go right here. All right, and then we're gonna take one of the pumpkins and just glue that down. Isn't this cute? I just love this cute little latte cup. Do you guys like pumpkin spice? Are you pumpkin spice people or not? I'm gonna say I'm generally not, but I like the idea of it, but I don't know. All right, so we've got our two elements here. We're gonna pop these up. And we might as well do that now. Where's my dimensionals? All right, let's put some right over here and add a little strength to that. Now, I feel like I'm like a glue magnet. I'm sticking to everything now. Okay, Lisa says she is not. Yep, me neither, but I wanna be. I'm not, but I wanna be. But I don't do any of those like Starbucks type drinks or lattes or pretty much the only thing I ever drink is water anymore. Once in a while, a diet root beer, but pretty much I only drink water pretty much ever. Okay, so we've got that. Let's put our um, uh, sentiments on, right? So we've got a sentiment label here. Nothing's better than. We're going to put this at the same angle as our die cut right here. I'll add just a little bit of adhesive here. Pumpkin spice right here, same angle. Okay, so now what we're gonna do with the leaves, as I, like I said, I'm gonna flip it over and then put the pumpkin pie inside of here and kind of line it up with my sticky fingers. Okay, and it fits nicely back in there. And then we're just gonna hold it with a glue dot so it stays together. And then we're gonna pop it on to our picture, our uh, card. I'm trying to get the best angle here for this because it just barely fits on here, but it'll hold it really nicely. So let's do the other one. Can you guys see? I know we're super far away. Grr, that makes me want to growl because I want it to be the way it was. And I have Googled it to no end, trying to figure out what is going on. Why is it far away now? I've practiced with, you know, how you can do a live where you're the only person you're being alive to. I played with it and I did get it to work the one day, but now I can't reproduce it. Anyway. Okay, so let's do our little leaves. So just kind of another fun accent on this, just to add a little bit more fall fun and kind of fill this space right here. All right. And because I'm gonna put my pumpkin here, I'm just gonna cut off these uh, little stems of these leaves and then put this on a dimensional, but I feel like I need a mini. Lisa, I hate coffee too. I'm not a coffee person either. Once in a while, oh, I lied. I drink more than water. I do drink a cup of mango tea every morning for breakfast. See that? I lied. Okay, all right, you guys, that's pretty much it, but we're gonna add some embellishments. Now, you know, lots of to choose from. I went with my old standby because I'm boring um, and just did some of these basic rhinestone jewels and I did do the dark pumpkin pie and just colored a few of them. Um, so I think I did a big, a medium, a small, or maybe four smalls, something like that. I don't even see a medium here, so uh, we'll just do a couple of bigs and some smalls. And then we'll put those on, and they're always pretty. Now I was looking for like, do we have an orange embellishment? And I couldn't think of one, but then later I saw one somewhere else and I was like, that's an orange embellishment. I should have used those, but I didn't. But have fun, be creative, use whatever embellishments you would like. And I just wanted to add a little bit of sparkle to the card. 
And let's put some little bitty ones. Whoa. Okay, I think we're really done this time. Let me get this out of the way and then I'll hold up the card so you can see it up close because we're so far away. All right, you guys, this is card number one. Let's see, there's a delay, so it takes me a minute to see it on camera. Da -da, this way. The other thing is that my, it's the camera is showing my thing, which is weird, I don't know. Okay, card number one. Okay, let's do the next fall thing, which is our donut box, all right? So this is fun, and I couldn't not use the donuts because oh, I thought that's so cute. And so anyway, this is what we came up with. So we're gonna do this little box. What do you think is inside? Of course, the hostess donuts, right? Do you guys like these? These are pretty yummy. So that's what we're gonna put inside. All right, so I don't think we're using anything new that I didn't already show you. So let's get our pieces out. Let me put this aside a little bit for here so we can look at it while I'm doing it. All right, so here's our pieces for this one. This one's pretty simple. Um, even the cutting, you know, it's just basically decorating the edges. We're gonna do a little stamping for the donuts right here. So this is the key. This is gonna be our box right here, okay? So the, the way we've done this box right here is this is 10 inch by eight and a half, all right? And let me get one out and just show you because I think it's, sometimes it's nice to just see it cut. Um, it'll be cut and, hold on, I gotta find some Cajun craze. It'll be cut and scored for you if you get the kit. But if you're not getting the kit, let me just show you how we did it here, okay? So you have your eight and a half by 11 piece and we want it to be 10 inches. Hold on, I have no room here. So I'm gonna take it to, you need to get over. Okay, so we're gonna do 10 inches here and just cut off this one inch on the side, right? We don't need that. Okay, then we're just gonna do the scoring. So on the 10 inch side, kind of the long side, we're gonna score it because we want, the box is gonna be long, so we want it this way, right? So we're gonna score two inches over here. Whoops. And then we're gonna come over and score at eight inches or just flip it around and score two inches again, right? So we've got two inches on both sides here. Then we're gonna take it this way, fold this up, and we're gonna do two inches again. I always keep my stuff even and simple um, like that, okay? So we've got two, four, six, and I guess that's premature, I need eight. And you can see all that's gonna be left is that half inch, right? So that's it, the whole thing is scored the way we need it. And let me just pull out my little book just to kind of show you what it looks like, okay? So you can see it a little better than on the dark with the scoring. So um, we've got our 10 inches by eight and a half, two, 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 and one half left over here. I know it's not to scale and it's very messy, but this is kind of how I create. And then two inches on the long side scored, okay? So those are all the score lines. All right, so let us go ahead and do all of our folding. Again, I think this would just be really fun, especially for a coworker or, well, for a teacher, for anybody. Um, this calls for donuts, and sometimes this does call for donuts. I could think of a couple instances today where it called for donuts. <laughs> just saying. Okay, all right. So we've got it all scored up, and it's all set. So this little half inch side right here, then when we fold this up, this is gonna be kind of our lip, our lid that hangs over. Okay, so we're gonna start by cutting this. Okay, so I'm gonna cut here, but I'm also gonna cut it at an angle because I want it to be pretty as it flaps down. Okay, so let me cut this on an angle. 
Okay, so we've got that. All right, then these are the sides that are gonna get folded in. So let me get bigger scissors, because they're a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna cut all these in just to the first score line. And I'm just keeping them square because that's going to help keep me my box nice and square. I don't want any angles on the on these ones right here. So let's just flip it over and do the other. I like that our cardstock is nice and strong, so it makes for a good sturdy box to put your treats in. And I find that having this grid, you know, background, or you can use grid paper. Um, right here helps me, you know, just when I'm creating, I'm just taking my donuts and putting it down. And I'm saying, okay, I'm going to need, you know, three inches this way. I'm going to need two inches this way. And that kind of helps me um, get the box created. Okay. So just to see what we're going to do here, these are just going to fold in like this. Okay. And then we're going to have this um, flap right here. Okay, so you can see these two pieces are hanging out. We don't need this at all, so this one can just get cut off. It's useless, doesn't need to be there. And I'm making this difficult, right? And then, so I want the same half inch on the other sides of the lid. So you could score it at a half inch. I'm just gonna eyeball it and say, yeah, this looks like about a half inch to me. And I'm just gonna cut it on both sides about that you can be very precise if you like and then again i'm just going to angle just the front part right here um so actually i'm going to do both because i want it to tuck into my box nicely so let's on our little lid flaps we're just going to cut at the angle okay all right so let me lay this out so you guys can see we're all done playing with that and this is what it's gonna end up looking like for our box, okay? So we've got our three flaps here, we've got our six inches by two, 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 and two, and then we have our little half inch um, pieces right here that's gonna be the lid. All right, let's take some glue, and I'm gonna start with the middle and put some adhesive here and here. You can use any adhesive that you want. And then I'm going to do the back part and get my nice straight edges here so the box is uh, rectangular and everything fits together nicely. Let me fold this back so you guys can see what we're doing here. This is the front of the box, so I want to do this one second so that you have the fold here and the open edges towards the back. Okay, super, super easy, right? Simple. I keep. I like to keep things simple, especially if you got to make a few of these. Okay, there it is. There's our box. What's going to happen then is these little pieces are just going to fold in on the sides, and I'm going to leave this hanging over the edge right there on the front. Okay, so that is it. That is our box. Now we can start decorating it. Before we do that, let's just let this dry for a minute, and let's do our stamping. So we are going to. I keep having like all these little pieces, and I always wash my desk before I get started with this stuff, but I don't know, I, I have these little pieces. So we're gonna do three of the donuts, and this is just a scrap of um, basic white. And that's all we have to do for stamping and coloring for that. And then we've got the two little labels. Now, these little pieces are just straight cut, right? I didn't use any dies for these. This is very, very skinny piece. This is very vanilla. And this is 5 eighths by 2 and... Nope. This is 5 eighths by 2 and 3 quarters right here. And then this is a quarter inch by 1 and 3 quarter. Very small. If you have very vanilla, it probably helps to stamp and then cut it out, right? Because you can cut around it easier. But we're gonna stamp it in early espresso. So we want, this calls for, on the skinny one. This calls for donuts. I love the donut font, so, so pretty. Do you guys have this kit, this bundle yet? Anybody have it who's a demonstrator? 
Are you gonna get it? If you're not a demonstrator, are you gonna order it? Just wondering, because it's super fun. Okay, um, lastly, let me just get out a pair of scissors and I'm just gonna cut this at an angle. All right, so we need to color our donuts. So again, I'm starting with the light pecan pie. Oh, that's fun, Jolene. She stamps at her daughter's house. That's super fun. All right, Lisa, you have it? Yeah, it's a good one, right? It's a good set. Light pecan pie, and this is just what I'm doing. Um, the like donut part that's, I don't know, underneath the frosting, I guess you would say. So I'm doing this for all three and coloring very poorly and out of the lines. I need to just slow down, not be all crazy and trying to go fast because of the video. So I was trying to think of, you know, what colors to make the donuts. You know, what are your favorite frosting flavors? Have you ever guys had cherry frosting on a donut? OMG. Lately, I've been craving um, a chocolate cake donut. I haven't found one yet, but I had to make do with my hostess powdered sugar, which was which was good. I couldn't help break into one of those. Um, but anyway, so I was trying to figure out what colors to use. And of course, we can do a chocolate frosted one, right? And I kind of was looking for a vanilla frosted one. And then, yes, I went with kind of an orange frosted one because um, I kind of wanted to stick with the theme and not like totally mess up the color theme. You know what, I forgot to do the insides. We got a little bit showing through on the inside of the donut color. Okay, so let's do a pumpkin pie one. Just starting with the light and then we'll add a little bit of shading with the dark. I'm just kind of going fast. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now, you don't have to shade either. You could just leave it the way it is if you wanted to. I'm not gonna actually shade with the vanilla one except for kind of a tone on tone. But I'm just going to add a little bit here, kind of around the middle, kind of messy, I know, again, because I'm in a hurry. Let's try and blend some stuff. All right, let's get blended. Come on. Okay, we're gonna call it a day on the pumpkin pie. I think it looks pretty good. All right, can you guys see that up close? That is our pumpkin pie. Okay, so the dark, going back to the colors. I used the darkest ones, were, which are the uh, 100 and 200 of the, um, what are these called again? I know I said it earlier. Don't remember what we called them. I'm gonna start with the dark. And it's really dark, but chocolate's really dark, right? Uh, I think you could, no, we don't have any early espresso blends. So anyway, this is what I came up with for the chocolate. Uh, natural blends, that's what they're called, natural blends. So um, I was just looking at Barb's comment and she says her, she's hoping hers comes tomorrow, her bundle. Um, just as a reminder, because it was a holiday yesterday, all the kits from last week went out this morning. My husband is very kind to uh, take everything to the post office for me on Mondays or in this case on Tuesday this week. So I appreciate his help with that. That's his regular Monday thing. So 
So I don't know. It, people get their kits at different times because I track everybody's through the email. And it's interesting to see what parts of the country get them at different times, right? So I know some people didn't get theirs till Saturday. So hopefully they'll be pretty fast this week. Okay, that's our chocolate one. So then what I did for the vanilla one was I just took the 800, which is more on the lighter side of the blends. And I'm just going to color this in. And I'm going to use the brush tip so I can do it really fast. Because I'm sure you're tired of watching me color donuts. Boring. And let me just add a little bit of blending with the same color. Okay. So that's it for the donuts. Now, the die cuts out the donuts, but it's a little bit tricky, I found. So this is what the die looks like, and you can see there's kind of like two bumped ends, and you can kind of see what the shape of the inside is. So it was a little tricky to um, get it lined up, but I think this is how it lines up. So if it doesn't work one way, turn it the other way. But you can see kind of the two bumps on the donut and the middle shape kind of like this. So um, you can see how this one, let me flip it around and see if it's better the other way. That's the ticket. That's the one right there. Okay. So you just cut out three of these and we've got those ready to go. Those are already die cut for us. So there's our donuts. And let's start putting this one together. Natural tones, Julian, that's it, yes. All right, I need a drink, hold on. Ah, water. Okay, so now again, I'm back to very vanilla. So I have these three strips of very vanilla, and these are five and five eighths by one and three quarter, so three of those. And then these are one and three quarter by one and three quarter, all right? so. That's the five pieces we need for that. Then we're doing that same DSP that I showed y'all before. And um, this right here is, hold on, five and three eighths by one and a half. Okay, so three of those. And then this is one and a half by one and a half. But there's, it's a little bit short on one side. So when I took the DSP, you know, at six inches, I don't know why, it should work out perfectly, right? So I cut them like this, and then the strips are like this, but they're just a tiny bit short on this side. So it's not a problem. Um, we're still gonna use it anyway, but you wanna get everything out of one piece of the DSP, right? Okay, so let's start by putting our strips on. And I think these colors look really pretty on the box. And then we're gonna, once we put these strips on, we're gonna close, put our donuts in and close our box. And have you guys used that beautiful, uh, it's called, is it very, yeah, it's very vanilla satin ribbon. Gorgeous. First time I'm using it. Very, very pretty. All right, so we've got these pieces ready to go. going to center these even though they're just a little bit off so I've got just a little bit more um, on one side right and what I'm going to do with it is when I put these on the ends I'm going to have that one that has a little bit more very vanilla at the top because we're going to have that flap that well I guess I tucked the flap in so it doesn't matter I was going to say the flap will come down and cover it you can do it that way if you want but I think we're going to tuck it in that is so crooked redo so I guess you want to center it when you put it on but okay let's put these pieces on front back and top and then we can just put attach our elements and we'll be good to go on this project okay so front back and top whoops okay all right donuts just fit in here really nicely 
We're gonna tuck this in and close it this way. Let's get out that beautiful ribbon and tie it around here. I want a nice big bow, so I'm gonna use, be generous with my ribbon here. The ribbon, I love Stampin' Up's ribbon because there's so much on a roll. And because I do a lot of um, classes and send kits out, um, I need a lot on a roll, right? Because I always include ribbon in my kits. So I need to be able to get a lot of class kits out of one roll of ribbon. All right. There we go. Let's see, do we need any trimming? Maybe just a little bit. All right, and I think I've left enough room still that we can put our uh, other pieces on. So let's do this calls for here. Right like that. Now we're gonna arrange our donuts on here. And I'm gonna pop up some of them. So let me start by putting this one on first and then we'll pop the other two around it. So we'll have this one up here. Whoa, stay. And then I'm gonna have to use some minis to do these other donuts. Has anyone started their Christmas card making yet? Some of those kits, that reindeer kit, I feel like that's gonna be one that um, sells out too. Is it Reindeer Days? Cause it's super cute. And I know a lot of people have already said that they like that kit. So I actually wanted to have a kit ready to present tonight, but um, I don't know, the weekend got away from me, believe it or not. So I did not get that even started. So that's a bummer. Okay, there's our donuts. And then this calls for donuts, so that's gonna go right there. So let me just put a dimensional little mini right here, and then we will add some adhesive. I feel like I need one more mini right here. Okay, there's our little donuts. Sign right there. Okay. This calls for donuts. I'd like to break it open and eat one right now. All right, you guys, fun little gift box, right? A little nice fall theme. I hope you guys like that. Okay, let's switch gears now and let's do a little bit of some winter projects. So I can get rid of some of these stamp pads. Let me just file this one away, put this one over here. Okay, so hot chocolate, you know we had to have, we had to do the hot cocoa thing. And um, I kind of designed this project around um, these uh, hot cocoa, double chocolate, because it's gotta be double, right? We need it extra chocolatey. So very skinny, you guys can see this is very, very skinny. All right, so you had me at hot cocoa. Give me one second, I'm just gonna put this away. Okay, here are our pieces for this card. Now, with this card, it's not a card. It is a treat holder. But now we're going into the next set of designer series paper. And this one is Take a Bow. Have you guys seen this set? So it's Take a Bow paper, and it's I think it's designed to make the bows because there's um, dies, so you can cut out the dies and make bows. I personally have no interest in making my own bows. I'm lucky if I even get the packages wrapped. So I will not be making my own bows, I say at least now. But I love small pattern paper. It's one of my favorite things um, with a nice small, and these are very beautiful Christmas papers. So these are super awesome. I'm gonna be using these a lot. So that's what we're using on these projects right here. Okay. So back to our pieces. So again, let's pull out the sketch so you can see. This one is our hot cocoa holder, all right? 
So this is going to be four and quarter. So you can get two of these out of each of your pieces of cardstock because you're just going to cut it in half, the eight and a half, cut into four and a quarter. And then it's 10 and three quarters this way. And then all we're going to do is we're going to score it. Um, uh, and it's 10 and three quarters. So why isn't it 10 and a half? Oh, because of the fold. Okay, so 10 and three quarters. So you are going to score it then at five and five and a quarter on this side and then a quarter inch on each side. So you just got these quarter inch little things and that's it. That's all we're doing with it. It's super simple. So now um, let's just fold the rest of our scored edges here. And if, if you want yours to be fatter, like let's say you're using a different brand, I mean, you can make adjustments to it, but you could add a quarter inch on this on all sides to make these a half inch. It might be a little bit easier to work with, but I like the skinniness of it, I really do. And it fits the hot, this particular hot cocoa brand perfectly. So, so we're, even though it's a little bit difficult to fold this quarter inch paper, we're gonna do it and make this cute little holder. Okay, super easy. Now let's get our folds this way. All right, and I think this other one is already done, but let's make sure it's nice and... Okay, so as you can see, uh, with the quarter inch fold right here, one side is just a little bit shorter than the other, which is fine because the packet's going to go in there. Now it's up to you too um, if you want to keep these little side things right here or if you just want to cut them off right here. Completely up to you, okay? Uh, but anyway, let's go down here and we're just going to keep this straight. I think I kept it straight. All right, and we're just cutting this. So just like the other one, we are gonna fold these in and put our little dot of glue, just like this. We want the shorter side, which is this side right here, to be on the fold, the fold to go that way. So we're gonna put the glue on this side right here. Now, um, should we use Terrence? No, I'm gonna use glue. I'm gonna get crazy and be messy and use the glue. That way I can wiggle it around a little bit as I'm putting this together. All right, so this piece is gonna come up here and sit on this little, this little bitty fold right here. Okay, I'm just gonna hold that for one second. Just kind of let it set up for a second. Okay, then we're going to Go ahead and put these edges up and it's like again we're working with very small pieces of paper so it's going to take us a second to get this together and hold it down okay so the key is once you get it together hold it until the glue kind of sets up and then we're going to let this dry for a minute okay let me flip it the other way I want to make sure it's good and set up so okay that looks good right so easy now all I have to do is decorate which is going to be easy so I'm going to put that aside and let it continue to dry so I have this piece right here which is probably overkill for what we're going to do with it uh, which is stamping and die cutting this is going to be our background piece you know on the front so this piece is five by three and a half. I was just listening to the rain. I started pouring outside again. Crazy. Um, I've die cut from the, uh, what's the name of it again? I forgot. I wanted to say stylish shapes, but it says nested essentials. So this one in real red and then this one in white. Uh, so we have um, our little die cut. All right, so that's gonna be a layer for over there as well. Um, we're going to do some die cutting in the red and I'll show you what we're going to do with all these things and then just a little bit of stamping. So the only stamping we're going to do is on these three pieces. All right. And we're going to use real red. So let's do the stamping first and we're going to do you had me at. Uh, let me see. Da, da, da. Here it is. 
And again, this is with those little bitty skinny dies. All right, so that's that. All right, and then we're going to take our memento and we're gonna do the same thing with the paper piecing. So I'm gonna get the cup out again. And this little dotted cup is gonna be our cup. All right, and then we don't need to stamp the whole, I didn't cut the, it big enough to do a stamp on the whole thing because really all we want is the label from this. Let me move it like this. And we're just gonna use that for the label. Okay, so we've got our two pieces like that. Now, let's stamp on our white piece. Oh, it's hot in here too, it's kinda humid. Okay, so what do we need for this one? We need whipped cream. Now, if you wanna add sprinkles, you can. I didn't on this one, but you can. We need um, a candy cane. Whoa, that one didn't come out good. All right, and we need some marshmallows. So when I first made this card, I just did marshmallows because I thought, oh yeah, marshmallows and hot chocolate, that's cool. But then it didn't seem like a much, like much because I felt like the marshmallows weren't really high. And so once I did it, I was like, oh, let's still add some whipped cream. So I put the whipped cream behind and added it that way. Okay, so. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's, we're done stamping. Now, this red piece right here, see, see what I mean? Way too much. Didn't need that much, but okay, just a scrap. So this red piece, you're going to go ahead and do the, um, cut out the hot cocoa with your dies out of the red, and then you're going to cut out a heart. So you need a red heart to cut out of there too, okay? So let's see, we've got all that die cut. So this time, I actually went ahead and stamped. See what I mean about humid? My tape's not sticking. This thing's just gonna keep falling down. Um, so, okay, I did add some of the red sprinkles this time. Here's our marshmallows, here's our candy cane. All I did with the candy cane is just did every other in real red, okay? That's it, kept it simple. So let me get these things out of the way. Here's our red heart. And here's our hot cocoa, all cut out. Let me get the O's cut out of here. There we go. Okay, what do we need to do still? We need to start assembling our cup, first of all. I always turn the AC down in here before I get started because these lights get really hot too, but even though I turned it down, I am hot. The rain's coming down pretty good again. Hope it stops raining tomorrow. People in San Antonio get super excited when it rains. I don't get excited when it rains. Probably because we're always in a drought and we need the water. But I don't like the rain. Okay, so I'm just cutting out the label again like we did last time. And then we're just gonna start gluing these things together. Make sure I'm good on the black line here so it's not too big. All right, let's glue. Can you guys hear that rain? Sheesh. When I was driving to work this morning, did I say this already? Some of the roads were kind of flooded. It was kind of crazy. And then I saw like on Facebook later, some shots of some stuff downtown and that water was really high. Okay, so like I did the first time, I did some marshmallows. Okay, I'm just taking that down. Hopefully we don't need any more measurements or I'm just gonna have to pull it up when I need the measurements. So I'm just going along the bottom edge <clears throat> and adding my marshmallows here. Now you could add two layers of marshmallows. If you just wanna stick with just marshmallows, you could do that, that's fine. But I think marshmallows and whipped cream is super fun. What do you guys like on your hot chocolate? Do you have special things that you like on your hot chocolate? Whoops, I wanna put the glue on the front of that candy cane. Marshmallows are okay, but I really love 
good whipped cream on my hot chocolate. I don't do hot chocolate that often, but, and I have kind of an old, I don't know, it's called, it was like a Mr. Coffee or I don't know, it's kind of this awesome old um, hot cocoa maker. And it's great because you just put the ingredients in and it's got like a stir thing in the bottom and a heater. So it heats it to the perfect temperature. So it kind of, um, I'm just gluing this right like that. So it just mixes and heats your hot chocolate. And then when it's at the perfect temperature, it shuts off and it's perfect hot chocolate every time. They don't make it anymore. Okay, so there is our hot cocoa. Let's put, oh, you know why that extra piece of white was so big? Now it's coming back to me because we're gonna glue our hot cocoa words to it and then cut them out. That's why that's so big. All right, so we've got that and that. Let's glue this to our piece of white. If I can figure out what I did with it. Here it is. See, there's a reason. I don't know, you make these cards once quickly and then you have to remember what you did. So again, I'm just using a little bit of glue, putting the hot on, and then we'll put the cocoa on. Then we're just gonna cut uh, just a little edge around this. Now, I mean, the other thing you could do is if you don't wanna go to the trouble of die cutting and gluing, I'm pretty sure there's a hot cocoa stamp, so you could just stamp it. And you don't even have to cut around it, you could just put it on some these don't have to be straight. You could just, well, except the words do, but I'm just saying placement. It doesn't matter where you put it. Okay. Does that seem a little funky? Okay, there we go. Okay. Let's see. Let's get our scissors and cut these out. Um, Lisa, I have lists. I have lived in Texas for 12 years now. 12 years in Texas. I always laugh because they say um, you don't move to Texas, you join Texas, which is kind of funny. Because, you know, Texas has its own everything, right? Of course, I have a Texas waffle maker. When the grandkids come, we have to have Texas waffles. Everything's shaped like stars or the shape of Texas. I have Texas-shaped cutting boards. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, so I'm just leaving a little bit of a border. Um, just kind of freehanding it. So there's our hat. All right, let's see. Um, Lisa, we moved here for my husband's job. So that's why we moved here. And then he retired. I mean, we were here for a while before he retired, but, and here we are. I will say I really love the Texas weather, but if I'm being honest, I really miss my kids and my grandkids a lot. Okay, but I'm fortunate to be able to go see them. And thank goodness for FaceTime. Love, love, love FaceTime. Okay, let's put this together. Get a packet ready too. So we've got our packet of hot cocoa. All right, let's just build on this. Oh, how did I cut that wrong? Hold on. Let me look. Because if we were saying that one piece was five, then this should be uh, take a bow. This should be five inches, but that doesn't make sense because according to our diagram, um, it was five inches. So we need, 
it looks like we need a quarter inch cut off. Good and sticky. Much betters. There we go. Nice and centered. Okay. And I'm just, I'm not popping any of these layers up. Leave a little room at the top for our sentiment and more room at the bottom. Let me put this in to give it a little bit of stability. I'm gonna fold the bottom just a little bit on this because I didn't want it to stick up and show quite so much at the top. All right, as a matter of fact, I don't even like it showing that much. I'm gonna fold a little bit more. Tuck it in there. There we go. Okay, we'll pop this up. All right, right like this. Okay, and then let's pop up our hot cocoa. We're just gonna pop up everything now. I might as well get all my little dimensionals on because I'm gonna switch to some skinny ones now and add one right over here. Whoops, all right. And we can put all this on. I hope it's not gonna rain all night because you know, I need to sleep. And it's so noisy. Although sometimes it's more relaxing to, you can sleep better in the rain, right? Because of that noise, that kind of white noise type thing, but quiet's good too. All right. Now, what about these embellishments, you guys? Love, love, love. These might be my favorite embellishment from the catalog. I feel like when I place my order tomorrow, I'm gonna to have to get more of these because they're so darn cute. This is like embellishments I wanna have forever and add to every Christmas card I ever make. Okay, let's not get carried away. And look at how many sizes there are. How many sizes are there? It looks like one, so I guess there's three sizes. But aren't they cute? I love them. Whoops, how about I put it on the right way? Come on. Just cute, cute, cute embellishments. Love them. Okay, let's add a little bit of ribbon to easily, uh, to kind of cover up a little bit of that and give something to pull on. So this is the sheer white and silver edged ribbon. We've been using this last couple of weeks in a row. It's a pretty versatile ribbon. We've um, colored it in the past with some blends. We're gonna keep it white. Several white ribbons we have right now, which is pretty awesome. I'm gonna keep it a little bit longer. We'll add a little bit of ribbon drama, right? by keeping it long, but how about we keep it even? And a glue dot. Um, so Barb, the hot cocoa I just got from our grocery store. All right, this is just gonna go right here. All right. Project number three, fun, right? I hope you guys like it. I did not let that dry long enough. I think that'd be fun. I would like to get one of these from somebody, for sure. Okay, last, 
we're going to do this card right here. It says, you are the peppermint of my hot cocoa. And I think we're gonna try something just a little bit different with this one because I like it, but I feel like it's a lot of red and we only have the one green accent. So I was wondering, what do you guys think if we stamp this in green so we have a little bit more green on the card rather than all just red and white? So I'm gonna do all the sentiments in garden green and see how that looks. Let me pull that out right now. Just We'll just try it a different way and see which way we like better. So this is kind of one of the classic cards that we do, right? We've done that one a lot. I think it's a good one to do. Let me, I, I'm gonna put, hold on. I need to organize for one second. Okay, here's the pieces for our last card, our last project. Okay, so we're starting with this standard card base. So eight and a half, five and a half, score to four and a quarter like normal, but then we're also gonna score it at two and one eighth. All right, so we've got two score lines, two folds. I'm gonna bring this, even though I scored it at two one eighth, I wanna make sure it lines up nice. So I'm just gonna, when I fold it, um, just make sure that it's really, really lined up right. For some reason, my score lines are never perfect, but you can always fix it, right? And force it whichever way you want it. Of course, um, I did do that opposite of what we need, but all right, there we go. So that's how our card is going to open, just like this. Okay, next we have our pieces of DSP. Very, very cute. This peppermint, right? Because it's red and white striped. So let me look at my measurements. I'm going to put up my sheet one last time and reinforce it with some extra tape. Okay, I'm, I use the post-it tape because I don't want it to mess up my wood. All right, so we have the Take a Bow DSP. This is five and a quarter by four, and this is five and a quarter by one and seven eighths, all right? But the post-it tape probably really is not designed for that, but it keeps my furniture safe so nothing bad happens to it, um, but sometimes it falls down repeatedly, right? Okay, so there's our card base. Now, we have our two um, stylish shape die circles, and I just got some glue on there from my messy fingers, and we're gonna put that right there. And we're just gonna build on it. So, let me put this here. We want it right in the center, and we're only gonna put adhesive on half of it. And then let me get it lined up kind of right in the center. Let's see if we did okay. Good, we did perfect. Look, no adhesive there. All right, so there we go. Now we need to do some stamping. Kind of the same thing we've been doing, all right? So I don't even think I need to show you guys the stamping, right? So what we're gonna do, let me get out. Well, actually I do have to stamp it because I have to cut it. I didn't die cut everything, so fine. Let's get out the memento and do our two cups again. So we're gonna do this one. We just used this paper on the last project. Now we're gonna do our little cup out of this. And then we want the label, which I guess we're just doing out of here. All right, and we're gonna cut our white label out. All right, the other thing we're gonna stamp is the same thing we did before. So we're gonna stamp a whipped cream out of here and then three candy canes, all right? I did red sprinkle stamping. Um, and then all I did was just color the every other with the real red blends, okay? So we have those pieces that we have uh, stamped, colored, and then die cut. These we're gonna hand cut. This piece of red that I'm giving you is for hearts. So just cut some hearts out. And we're only actually, well, we're using two hearts. We could even put another one there, so maybe three hearts. All right, so I've got three hearts cut out of the red. Now we're gonna stamp our sentiments. So we said this time we want to stamp, and then this piece is the same size in um, basic white as the outside circle is in red, and that's gonna go on our inside, and we're just going to stamp on that too. So let's get out the card in green, and we want You Are the Peppermint. 
And again, I've just taken two separate stamps. You are the peppermint, you are the, and then peppermint, and put them together. And we're gonna try it with the garden green and see how we like it, all right? This one, I wanna stamp all the way over to the right side of the banner. All right, and then we need to my hot cocoa, also put together. This time we want it all the way to the left of the banner. Okay, got that. And then the last thing we're gonna stamp tonight is love you on the inside. Um, doesn't have to be love you, could be happy birthday, could be anything that you want it to be. Uh, could be happy anniversary, that would be cute, right? What if it was happy anniversary? All right, hold on, I'm down to the last. Okay, now here's what I did with this one. This one says love you more than. I just wanted to see, to say love you. So first of all, let me make sure that it's clean because I did it in the red last time. We're gonna use the post-it tape. Or if you're super good, you don't have to use the post-it tape and you could just stamp, you know, half of it. All right, but, you know, we can try that. So let's see what we do. Nah, I'm gonna go over. All right, pull this off. And then this can go kind of here at the top. Love you. All right. We're on the home stretch, everybody. Let's put these things together. All right, scissors. Don't you love how easy these are to cut out? Super fast. Now, I've also seen people just stamp them on like the basic white and then you can use the die so you don't have to fussy cut it if you don't want to and then you can just color it in. I was kind of lost with, you know, I don't do like these kind of drinks and stuff. So I was like, I don't know what the cups look like or normally, but I thought the paper piecing was fun and kind of festive looking. So that's kind of what I went with. All right, this is just our label that we're cutting out here. Or what do you call it? Is it a label or is it like um, something to keep your hands from getting burnt? I don't know. Okay, let's get out some glue. The rain is not letting up. My husband has to keep um, letting water out of the pool because the pool's getting too high when we get that much rain. Okay, let's do a heart. Hearts make everything nicer, right? A little bit of adhesive here on the bottom. And we'll just put that right here. So it's kind of overflowing the top a little bit. Let that dry for a second. And let me get the glue off my hands. We're gonna take one of these. And again, a little glue on the front of it. Cute and festive, right? A little peppermint hot cocoa. Let's let that dry for a second. All right, hold on. I'm just wetting down my baby wipe again and getting my hands unglued. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. All right, I hope the internet doesn't go out. I'm just cutting off the banner on this side and then on this side over here, pretty close to the words. And then I think we're ready to just finish putting it together. Let's glue these hearts on here. You could also stamp them like we did the orange ones before.
Okay. So what we wanna do, let's put this on the inside, right? We wanna line this up, because I want my words to be straight too. So I'm not gonna press it down really hard, but I'm lining it up on the outer circle because I want it to be completely covered up. And let's just press this on when we open it, okay? And our words are straight. I think we're pretty good. It's covered up perfectly. So that worked, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna add a little bit of adhesive to here and put this one right on the edge right here, like that, and it hangs over and that's perfectly fine. And then this one's a little shorter, which is perfect because we still want the words to show when the card is closed. So we've got that like that. Let's pop this up. Okay, Jolene says it is a cup cozy. <laughs> Lisa says, <laughs> Lisa says, Holy Hannah, it's raining hard there. Build your ark. <laughs> Yeah, I think the dogs won't be going out soon, huh? Crazy. All right, that like that. Okay, let's add a couple more of those cute little candy canes. One there, last one here. Whoa. There you go. Okay, and I think that's it. So here I kind of put a heart down here and the, and the one I just did, I kind of put them there. All right, more peppermints, please. I love the flavor of peppermint too. One of my favorite things as a kid was to get peppermint ice cream. And I still love peppermint ice cream and you can usually only get it around Christmas, but it is delicious. Okay, you guys, here it is. This is our last project, our last card. What do you guys think? Do you like the green words or the red words better? I think I like the green. I think it just adds a little bit more to have all three of the colors. What do you guys think? Anybody have an opinion on this? All right, let's bring our projects in. We can take a look. I have an extra one too, so um, I guess we could have put, oh wait, it's not extra. It fell off my card. Rude. Stay there. Okay, let's find all the projects. Okay. Oh, you guys like green. Me too. Yeah. Okay. We have our Nothing's Better Than Pumpkin Spice. We have our This Calls for Donuts. We have our You Had Me at Hot Cocoa. And then we have our peppermint cards. So I hope you guys liked the projects tonight. I think this is a super fun set to work with. And I actually want to make more projects because it's very fun. And, uh, you know, scrapbooking too. If I start to incorporate some scrapbooking at some point, these would make for great scrapbooks, right? For around like Thanksgiving or, you know, we always have hot chocolate if we go do stuff. Okay, couple more quick things. Uh, if you would like the project measurement and supply sheet, you can email me. Here's my email right here, sunshineandsparklestamping at gmail.com. Um, if you are on my email list, it goes out to you automatically tomorrow, so you will get uh, the um, all the measurements for these cards uh, in your email tomorrow morning. Uh, don't forget Autumn Abundance Paper Pumpkin. This is like, it's going to be super fun. That ends September 10th, right? Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I love spending this time with you guys. You guys are awesome. Sharon says green too. Barb says green. Everybody, okay, good. Green it is. Maybe I should change that other one and fix it. Hey, World Card Making Day is coming up. Um, that is October 5th. You can uh, register for free um, with Stampin' Up. So if you need more information, I'll try and put this in my email for tomorrow too. Um, so you can see how to sign up for that. And I think that's it. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember what's on my calendar for next week. Um, but I haven't made any projects yet. So it'll be a surprise to me too, I guess. All right, you guys. Thanks. Have a great rest of the week. Thanks for joining me. Um, and, uh, and Jolene, you're welcome. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.